Well, welcome back to our final session and congratulations if you've been through all five up to this point. We're now coming into land and we're looking at the final critical issue, which is looking at ethical discernment and how Christians and Jews can share in common action. So, uh, so far, just to give a, a little recap, we looked at the theological frameworks, a difficult history and a distinctive relationship. And then we looked at these critical issues, beginning with what I suggest is the most pressing issue, the issue around mission evangelism. And then we looked at teaching and preaching. And the, uh, the previous session looked at the land of Israel, issues around legitimacy and the significance of the land, both theological significance, eschatological significance. And now we're looking at uh, common action. How, how can Christians and Jews you know, share together? And the final study seeks to highlight the ethical concerns shared by Christians and Jews, um, particularly those concerns which are heightened by having an eschatological context that both Jews and Christians are praying for God's kingdom and what do we mean by, by, by God's kingdom and the hopes we have for the future. Um, so there's a number of important points being made in this, in this issue. Um, and the closing two questions which CMJ raises in our, in our response resource to the original document is this, you know, what kind of local issues might be a good basis for collaborative action between a local church and the synagogue? What examples of such actions can be found within the history of CMJ? And again, you know, we, we have many examples of that. And again, you may have examples of what has worked well for you, and please share that with us, or, or areas where you have perhaps felt frustrated or misunderstood. So that's the first question. But the second question in, in the book here, in our response, is really perhaps touching a nerve here about sometimes collaborative action sounds really good, but um, there's a warning here by the chief rabbi in the, in the final afterword to the Anglican document that the warning is this. Let me just say, quote what he says, any suspicion that our engagement is being directed by a purpose other than the betterment of our mutual understanding and a necessary contribution to the common good is harmful and takes us sharply backwards. This is quite apart from the more obvious problem, the rabbi says, the affront to our fundamental right to the integrity of Jewish self-definition. That's from page 104 of the original Anglican report. So in a sense, the question is, what is the motivation for such common action? Is it a genuine desire to work together? Or is there a kind of Trojan horse of bringing in an evangelistic uh, attempt and an evangelistic uh, agenda? And obviously, from the rabbi's point of view, the chief rabbi's review, that attempt is inappropriate. Um, and I think in a sense, you know, from the CMJ position, we always want to be transparent. We believe there are many areas where the church and the synagogue can work together, particularly in the fight against anti-Semitism, perhaps in the understanding of the significance of pilgrimage, uh, the legitimacy and the importance of Israel. There are many grounds where we stand together and uh, perhaps as believers in God, in a secular society, again, there's, there's much common witness. But we do believe we need to be transparent and uh, we, we would never want to hide away or, or seek to cover up our desire to share the gospel. Um, and if that prevents certain common action taking place, well, that maybe that is a price we, we have to pay. But I think there is common ground, nevertheless, because of, because of uh, shared ethical values. So in CMJ we're always seeking to build bridges uh, and to identify and dismantle the barriers between Christians and Jews but we do that with an unapologetic evangelistic agenda and again I think that's where uh, the report would question the legitimacy of CMJ's position. So there's a lot of important issues in, in, in this report and again, just a number of books are on sort of common social ethics. Um, I think um, the book by uh, Jürgen Moltmann, The Open Church, is a really interesting book about how the church seeks to have partnerships with, with other faith groups and uh, uh, how, the, how the church develops an open um, sort of ecclesiology. I think, I think that's really helpful. Um, a book by a former Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, Christianity and Social Order, again talks about certain common economic and social values. And then uh, a sociological book, 
um, by David Lyon, published by IVP back in the day, Sociology and the Human Image. So again, as Christians and Jews, we share um, that common belief in the dignity of human beings and uh, the sanctity of life um, as a gift from God, that we are made in God's image, wonderfully and beautifully made. And surely there is opportunities here for, for genuine partnerships. But again, the evangelistic ministry may, may make that difficult at times. And, and we're not shying away from that. We fully understand it. So again, there's lots of questions here. So I hope in these little six sessions, what you're inspired to do, if you haven't got a copy of the original Anglican report, get a copy, read it, study it, and then read it alongside CMJ's response, CMJ's reflections on that. And again, as I said, you can buy the CMJ response from the CMJ website, just a couple of pounds to get a copy. But if you are hoping to have discussions on this document and you would like a live CMJ person to come and share in that, then we will do all we can to make sure a CMJ person can help in that um, and uh, to share in the discussion. So do please consider in following on from this to invite a CMJ speaker and we'll try and prioritise that. And we would also encourage you to keep in touch with us to, to share your insights from, from, from your groups. We, 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 would, we would love to, to hear uh, what you have made of this report, what you've made of CMJ's analysis of the report. We really want this to be a two-way process. So if you've been listening to these six little video clips and do get in touch, um, get, in, get in touch with your enthusiasm, your encouragement, and equally get in touch with your criticism and uh, 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 of us as well. We, we, we want to engage with you. Um, I mentioned the Romans 15.8 network. If you're a church leader and you want to stand on CMJ's principles here at the heart of Christian Jewish, Jewish relations, please, please, please um, join the network. We want, we want to make that a strong network. And if you're interested in looking at Jewish evangelism in the church context, the JET course, again, is worth exploring. So do have a look at that um, from the CMJ website. But I just want to finish really by saying thank you for engaging in these six little sessions. Um, I do believe this Anglican report, God's Unfailing Word, as I said in the beginning, will shape a generation of church leaders and others in how we relate to Jewish people. As the Archbishop reminds us, this is not uh, a separate issue, it's not, it's not a, a fringe issue, it's at the very heart of discipleship and I believe it's at the very centre of God's heart for the world and for mission. So I just want to finish by a quotation from Romans 1.16. Um, throughout the report, um, Romans 9 to 11 has been mentioned, has been critical, but also Romans 1.16 says something very important, which is the heart, I believe, of a Christian response to Jewish people. And this is what Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the good news. It is a power of God for the salvation of everyone who trusts, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. You could also say perhaps, especially to the Jew and equally to the Gentile. Thanks for listening. I hope some of this has been useful. I suggest we now go and get a drink and have a lie down and uh, then go back and do some more work on these documents. Thanks for listening and I hope you'll be in touch. God bless. <laughs>